I'm a first-generation college student. How's it going? My name's Emiliano Rodriguez. I'm a strong black man who loves the Lord. I'm Matt Goldstein. I'm uh, from right outside of San Francisco. I'm just a person in the world. I'm a human being. That's who I am. <laughs> I love going to practice because it's like I'm accomplishing something, but it's not <laughs> it's not homework, you know. So it's it's a little bit more laid back, and it's a good relaxing experience. I don't think we. I think we're just. We just I mean, we just. You know, one of my major decisions, why did I want to go to a liberal arts school? And it's sort of the love of the books, I guess you could say, and, and the love of the academic experience. Were there really large amounts of, or were there really large amounts of these like illicit currency flows? Or? Five, eight percent of their total currency might have been subject to something like that. But that's a thin market, and that's why the big variance, because it was I wanted market. to take a course on immigration at Swarthmore, but it's not offered. So we sort of sat down. And we sort of put it together and just started meeting. We meet once a week for like two or three hours. And it's kind of like a class, but it sort of takes that whole definition of like Swarthmore as a small school. It's like the smallest class, right? It's just me and a professor. What globalization and migration are doing to national boundaries. Remember that, that film that we saw in the comparative class, the performing the, the border yeah, about yeah, El Paso? Yeah. We should put you in contact with that film director. People are busy. Swarthmore students are some of the busiest people I've ever met in my life. Constantly working, constantly going from activity to activity. And so in that sense, the Swarthmore experience is truly intense, but it's not just academically intense. It's people are filling their lives with so many different things, and so everyone has a really rich experience, and you just sort of try to get as much in as possible. Pick it up, Emiliano. Good job. Where's the support? Over, over, over. Rugby is a really cool experience. I'm loving it. It's a great sport. My teammates are absolutely my friends, so it's pretty cool. We all sort of try to live in the same areas. We all hang out on weekends, so it's real camaraderie. It's very cool. We like to call it the last bastion of masculinity at Swarthmore, but it's just sort of a joke. It dropped in the charcoal right after. Saw Martin Warner today. <laughs> I didn't even recognize him. I've developed a lot of sort of different life plans, and, and they're life plans that I didn't have prior to coming to Swarthmore. I'd love to open up a nonprofit in my hometown of El Paso, Texas, to study sort of border issues. So there's all these things that I'd love to do, and only a limited amount of time to do it. So I'm considering research, I'm considering um, doing biochemical research. Uh, mostly health-related science. Next fall, I plan on attending medical school, and um, I guess my hopes in the future are to become a specialist, most likely in surgery. I actually want to be a banker, um, start as a credit analyst, maybe be a commercial lender, understand the business a little more, go to business school, and uh, utilizing all those skill sets and connections or what have you, to kind of do something socially responsible for it. Um, starting my own bank in a third world country. And these trees are my favorite ones. They're Japanese cherry trees. And then um, on the side of the building. In the spring, they flower this really beautiful pink. If you become an empty vessel so that you can just be a channel for healing the world, then that is one of the highest goals, spiritually speaking, for human beings. So while I'm making these sort of voluptuously shaped um, vessels, I'm, I'm sort of thinking of the inner space that I'm creating and the air that I'm containing. I feel like if I can learn to be a compassionate person, then that will help change the world in some way. And this sounds very spiritual and very far off, but it's a deep belief of mine that if we all look into ourselves and if we all try to be better people, then that's how the world is going to change. As an pulls me in tight, in a moment, I'm secure. All of the life here at Swarthmore is curious and I really appreciate that and that people are willing to listen to other people's ideas, people get in debates, people just explore.
So this is the site of the Wall of Peace. <laughs> Here, there's just going to be two feet of rock so that people can hang out, and it's kind of like a, a bench. And then um, when we get to here... The great Quaker quote is, there's no way to peace, peace is the way. And I feel like even in communities that are pretty privileged, like Swarthmore, there's still work we can do to create peace in the world. And, and often by creating community and creating something that's right here, then that can hopefully expand to the rest of the world. After going to, uh, to Sierra Leone for a summer, which was funded by Swarthmore's public policy department, I kind of shifted my ideas and have been more focused on looking at issues of sustainable consumption within the states and the way that that connects to development in other places. I gotta admit, a black man on a bike riding around is just probably the most unstereotypic thing anyone will ever think of. I'll ride place and people will just look at me kind of strange like, what? Currently I'm working on a prison advocacy program with a lady named Judith Truestone who's written a book called Selling America's Souls. The paradigm of prison uh, being a place of punishment, changing people's minds to being a place of rehabilitation. Uh, places that are I took an education class with Eva Travers. You do? Great. Do you? And something inside of me really like woke up. It was, it was really kind of like there was a dormant idea about I really want to help kids. I really want to be someone that changes their lives, that helps them make a better life and have better opportunities for themselves. September after I graduate, I've got a job with a SWAT alum who runs this company called Communication Works, a company that focuses on public policy and media affairs, all centered around education. Oh, you guys are playing video games? <laughs> it's such a random group. I mean, it's me, it's two black guys, uh, a Chinese guy, and, and a white guy from, from Ohio. I mean, and I mean, our group really doesn't make any sense why, but um, we just enjoy each other's company and uh, we just really like spending time together. Well, yeah, I guess. Just about all the students deny stereotypes. They just, it's not so much that they're trying to deny them, but as a function of who they are and who they're comfortable being and how they're comfortable within their own skin, they deny stereotypes. There are so many people here from all over the place that it really builds a community um, where you can be yourself and you can explore who you are. It's not, your identity isn't static. My freshman year, nine languages were spoken on our hall. And obviously we didn't communicate in most of those languages, but it was still really, really cool to have all these people from different backgrounds, different countries. Everyone really is there for everyone else and there's, there's no competition. Students work collaboratively. The professors know that they're giving you a lot of work and they know that they're expecting a lot of you and they are accommodating about their expectations. You know, they, they want you to succeed. But in the end, you really have a family here and that's what makes it feel like home. And when you come to college, you're gonna want a home to go to. Okay, mail is like the best thing ever, for the record. Like, like, if you want to make a college student happy, send them mail. Like, whenever you get a package, everyone's really excited, and, like, the whole, everyone in the dorm room is like... <gasps> My roommate is wonderful. She's a great person. She's really funny. We've spent, like, so many nights, like, staying up until 3 a.m. talking about life and what we think it means and where we're going and what other people are doing. We have all this privilege. We have all this stuff. And then, like, people go out in the world, and they get so jaded. Don't deal with the bullshit. If it's not clear in the state, don't judge it. 
Schulden Fry is an amazing person. He really engages you in conversation, both in class and out of class. He really cares about what you have to say. So he's really interested, and you get to like have a real conversation. It doesn't feel like he's the professor and you're the student. You know, like you're separated by some boundary. <laughs> I love his little library. Professors actually just wrote a book called The um, Paradox of Choice. Oh, and, very, yeah. and then something right in here just knocked me over because it sounded like that's exactly what Descartes was talking about. And I just wanted to ask you yeah, if it right. I'm the first person in my family to go to school. And the fact that I'm able to go to Swarthmore is just like a dream come true. Well, I think you're doing a great job on that. Music is such a huge part of my life. I mean, I like almost any kind of music. So the fact that I'm able to sing in a group, even though it might not necessarily be all the kind of music that I want to sing all the time, it's a really wonderful experience, and I love it. Is that a, uh, what kind of camera is this? <laughs> I don't know what I want to major in. I'm completely undecided, but it's perfectly okay to come into Swarthmore undecided because that's what people at Swarthmore do. It's a liberal arts school. It gives you the opportunity to like take any class that you want and really find what you're passionate about. We're a small campus. There's a lot of personal attention, um, but it doesn't mean that there's limited opportunities. Um, I've counted up and over my four years I've received $40,000 in college funding to do all sorts of different projects. Um, I ran a mentorship group in North Philadelphia. I went to Mexico and taught communities to build composting toilets. Anything that I've wanted to do, they've found some way to make it happen. I think the thing that just surprised me the most is the, the thing is the fact that I actually do have something to give to people here too. And I came here thinking that everyone was just gonna be so much smarter than me because I went to public school in Minnesota. I realized that that I do have experiences and insights that other people don't have, but that there are other people here who are like me in the sense that they went to public schools um, and are getting along just fine. Here we are with kind of this beautiful, the beautiful bird's eye view of the baseball field, which actually out my window, I'll show you out my window, it's a terrific view, it's great. So I wake up in the morning, I get to check field conditions. So I'm the RA of this building. RAs are resident assistants. You're kind of, you know, you're, you're in charge, kind of a, a landlord-like position, but it's much more laid back. Welcome to the treehouse is kind of the, uh, the kind of the theme. So each room is like a, a room in the treehouse, the captain's quarters. Like, myself the captain of the building. Got a, a piece of original artwork from actually one of the guys on the baseball team, another outfielder, is an artist. So I'm his patron for all practical purposes. And uh, as you can see, you got a great view out onto the baseball field. You know, I played on the baseball team for four years and been a captain or a co-captain for three of those four years. Fader's getting serious on this. Learned a lot about relationships. Learned a lot about what it means to work hard, what it means to commit to something, what it means to have passion in something. All right, ready? We'll slow it way down. I think I really have done well in balancing my commitment to my academics, um, my commitment to my athletics, as well as the relationships that I've developed here. They didn't Yo, even have metal bats. Did you see the article in Sports Illustrated this week? The one with Bonds on the cover? Did you see Carlton's article in the Phoenix? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think I'm ready to rock. I want to have an impact on society. I want to contribute something to the world. As trite as it is to leave it to leave it a better place than I found it. It showed that patients who were on statins mm -hmm. had um, a lower frequency of cardiac rejection. 
I mean, you spent so much time working on this project. It begins at the end of your junior year. You start your thesis research, even before for a lot of people. The kind of basic fundamental science that I've learned being here is, is I mean, it's absolutely priceless. At the heart of things, we are undergrads, through and through, through and through. Well, maybe doctors soon, but, but not yet, not right now. That's, that's a little ways away. That's a little ways away. I think it is an incredibly challenging environment. You know, one that pushes you in ways that, uh, you know, will be uncomfortable and unsettling, but, um, but that, are, that are incredible learning experiences. Swarthmore has a really profound effect on, on the way that you think and the types of thoughts that you're able to think. I know myself a lot better and Swarthmore has helped me develop intellectually in so many ways and has helped me understand what intellect is. You know, there may be these incredible amounts of work and professors may demand incredible things from you and that then you have all these extracurriculars that are also demanding incredible things from you, but that that you're, you're loving it while you're doing it and you really enjoy doing all these things. You could call it intellectual. I would call it passionate, interested. It's just, it's amazing. It's, it's everything that you could want in a school because the people here really care about what they're doing, but they really care about each other. It's interesting to have people like follow you around. Like I don't understand why they really picked me. I don't think my life is all that interesting. I guess it's just, you know, your average sort of everyday Swarthmore existence. So it's been kind of strange thinking that they're like following me. And it's like, you know, you look over your shoulder and you're like, ah, there's people. Um, but it's really nice, it's good. If this will help other people understand the real Swarthmore experience, I would definitely do it again. Thank you.